Since the introduction of salmon into the Great Lakes nearly five decades ago, salmon fisheries have experienced numerous boom and bust years. Anglers reacted to the ever-changing environment by continually modifying traditional tactics to keep pace with fluctuating salmon populations, fish location, and prey abundance. Downriggers, planer boards, flat lines, and other trolling systems remain popular and effective methods for catching salmon, but with many refinements to meet today's challenges. We're not even set up yet. <laughs> Just the way I like oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some weight here. Mm -hmm. that head shake. I'll tell you what, he smacked that thing. He smacked it and ran. I can keep him out of the other lines, which can be a real trick. King salmon. Now just lift up. Got him. Woo! You know, there's lots of ways to catch fish on the Great Lakes and lots of different presentations. And in order to catch fish consistently, you've got to be aware of what the fish are eating and the conditions you're faced with. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Environmental cause and effect. Boy, that'll get your attention. Reset up here, Chip. Okay. You know, environmental changes on any body of water directly affects fish behavior. And realistically, in order to catch fish consistently, you've got to adapt your presentations to all these environmental changes. And that's nowhere is that more prevalent here than on Lake Michigan. And today I'm fishing with Captain Chip Porter. And Chip, what sort of environmental changes have you seen on this lake and how have you adapted your presentations to meet those changes? Well, you know, I never used to have to fish te techniques like lead core. But since the water's cleared up, I use lead core lines because it's a very stealthy presentation. What I do is I run them on planer boards. They run out to the side of the boat and then they run anywhere from 50 to 100 yards behind the boat, behind the planer board. So they're out there running in very clean, clear, undisturbed water, which is the essence of a stealth technique, which is what the clear water requires. Got the downrigger balls, big school of fish. We've got a couple of lures that are gonna pass right over them. There he is, on the rigger. Ooh, nice fish, nice fish. Oh yeah, I think it's a king. Ooh, look at him come up. Top floor. There he goes. What is it? You see it? Yep, it's the king. All right. Woo! Look at him go. You know, Dan, every night I go to sleep, I think about some big fish somewhere. And it's this wow. sound that I hear is my eye drift off. I'm going to clear these lines here. Yeah, probably a good idea to clear that lead core. It's fish like this that make us come back every day. You know, even downrigging tactics have changed in the clear water environment. Downriggers are still as effective as they ever were, but we fish them differently. We do a couple things that stand out differently, and probably the most notable is that we use a much longer lead behind our downrigger ball than we ever used to. Sometimes we're back behind the downrigger ball 100 to 150 feet in order to achieve a stealth presentation. One of the other tactics that we use is we put our releases on a tether. We'll put them on a four to six foot piece of monofilament off the downrigger ball so that the baits are riding above the downrigger ball and actually riding in clear undisturbed water away from that downrigger ball to achieve a more stealthy presentation. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Look at that. What That's a, a dandy fish. There goes a fish. fish on the dipsy, Dan. All right, take them. You know, by understanding the changes in your environment and adapting your technique to meet those changes, you can continue to catch fish like this. Nice king salmon. 